Welcome to the Fantasy Football Sackos Podcast with your hosts, Jason Shellcross and Alex Krobe. Let's go! Fantasy Football Sackos! Week two in the books. Welcome to week three waivers. Man, we got a, we we got s- a lot of ground can we to start cover. over, please. <laughs> can we just can I redraft? go back? Yeah, um, that's what I'm saying, man. Oh, my God. Madness. The, the funniest tweet I saw was, oh, all these uh, running backs, wide receivers and tight ends getting, uh, g- you know, getting drafted in the first two rounds and all getting hurt. Just goes to show that you should have drafted Lamar Jackson and Pat Mahomes in the first round. Oh, God. <laughs> I mean, at this point, they I got mean, a point. It's oh, not man. wrong. Uh, the uh, You say that. And now those two are going to get hurt next week. Just like don't put that juju on them. (laughs) You just did it. Not me. (laughs) All right. We got a lot to cover. We're going to be going over all the injuries from the weekend. Who the backups are. It's the waiver show, man. We got to be talking about it. Um, I just want to lead off by saying there was a megaton of injuries. And I said it before the show. I'll say it again now. Even though there was a plethora of injuries, I really don't think that there's any one or two guys that you should run out and be blowing all your fab on. Um, Yeah, like you did last week in our league, right? I blew it on several guys. Give me all of Naheem Hines. Give me Naheem Hines. I really. And (laughs) it's the only game of his entire career. He didn't have a carry. I'm not. I'm upset about it. But one of them was (laughs) Josh Kelly, who. 26 carries, 24 carries, something obnoxious. So you look good. No, I just sitting on the couch yesterday and I tried to change my luck from week one after starting 0 for 4. And I decided to um, just go get that little Caesar's pizza and eat the entire thing during the first quarter of the Bears game. Mm, and um, you know what? I don't think my luck really changed. So your point total increased, but you're still going to take that L to the top scoring team of the week. So sad to Sacco over here. Meanwhile, I might put up 50 because my team either didn't play or was injured or got injured. So, but seriously, sitting on the couch and you watch Barkley, um, you know, ding up his elbow and then like you're worried about like his shoulder getting jammed and then literally the next play he tears his ACL when he comes back in the on the in the game it's like oh god that sucks and then David Montgomery lands on his head and then Christian McCaffrey turns his ankle and then Devontae Adams hurts his hamstring slash his ankle and then Drew Locke is announces out and then Cortland Sutton isn't playing and then uh Raheem Mostert has an ankle injury and then Garoppolo's hurt and not playing and then uh, I don't know. You get to the afternoon games. Tyrod Taylor is like having chest injuries and has no idea what's going on. Um, it's a, it just sucked. Everything about week two sucked. Yes, it has. Uh, let's start from the top with quarterbacks that got hurt. Jimmy G, high ankle sprain. Um, I mean, the Shahanigans is saying that he might be able to play as early as this week, and it was a very mild sprain. I guess I'm less optimistic. Um, Nick Mullins went eight for 11 for 71 and a pick in the second half while Jimmy G was out. I don't think anybody's rushing out to go get Nick Mullins. It's just unfortunate for what it would mean for the rest of the offense, given how limited in weapons they were. If uh, they Uh, also miss Jimmy G. So I don't know if I agree with you on that completely. And the only reason I don't agree with you is because, I mean, Nick Mullins has done it before. Um, when Garoppolo was out two years ago, so they they were serviceable. I mean, George Kittle was serviceable. I I don't know whether he's coming back or not. But the thing is, for those running backs, and I know we're going to get to it in a little bit with Mostert being out, but they're still going to be serviceable on the ground because their offensive line is so good. Yeah. So I I I don't you know they currently don't really have any wide receivers, but I don't think it's going to slow their running game down or because tight end I, or yeah, they're two starting or, running backs. But anyways, God, brutal. Drew Locke is next. Uh, sprained AC joint. Looks like he's going to miss two to six weeks. Backup Jeff Driscoll went 18 of 34. Two touchdowns, a pick against Pittsburgh while Locke was out. Really not a bad performance from Driscoll. Kind of kept the offense moving. I wouldn't really downgrade anybody. 
Um, I don't think anybody's going to run, run out and get Jeff Driscoll, just like nobody was running out for Drew Locke either, though. True. Um, also, Noah Fant has looked very good in, he is in very two good. games against two pretty good defenses. Go Hawks. Um, and if you took him, oh, is it IOWA? Is that how you spell it? IOWA. Um, he is an Iowa alum. Um, as long as he keeps, you know, if you were taking him late, hoping for a breakout, I think you're extremely happy. Um, oh, yeah. And with, uh, with Driscoll going to him as often as he did once he got in the game, I think that if anything, it might even perk up Noah Fant just because of other injuries on his team. Uh, our next quarterback injury is Tyrod Taylor. He had a uh, a rib injury that he then got an injection for, and he then had a complication from the injection, causing him to have some sort of adverse reaction, and then he missed the game because of it. Um, Coach Anthony Lynn, even after Justin Herbert's explosion, said that Tyrod will 100% be the starter if ready to go week three. Herbert looked better, was 23 of 33 for 311, a touchdown and a pick in his first start, and he pushed the game to OT against the Chiefs. Uh, he also had a rushing touchdown. Say He also had an 18 yards and a score on the ground. I yeah yeah I think he made it hard to turn back to Taylor. Now he everybody the media was hammering Anthony Lynn for saying Tyrod's still the guy, and he said, "Look, as under as good as he as good as uh, Herbert was, we still lost the damn game. So no no leeway for the rookie there. But it was nice to see Austin Eckler catch some passes for once. That but. is a." Uh... That is a terrible take if you're saying against the the defending champs and you have a rookie quarterback who is told he's playing uh, five minutes before the game and he goes out and throws for 300 yards and Tyrod Taylor it, didn't it, look particularly good the first week. No, because um, he's not good. He's mediocre. You know what it is, if, though? It's this. It's the you can't fire me yet because I still have that rookie quarterback card I can play. So it gets him one more thing that he can say, oh, wait, all right, fine. Hold on. Let me play the rookie quarterback. And, you know, that's that's what it is. He's just saving his own job. And if he lies about it and Herbert does start, then, oh, my goodness. That's awful. Uh, he He's probably lying, if we're being honest. Uh, if if you are a Keenan Allen owner and you're taking him in the fifth or sixth round, you are ecstatic with Herbert being the quarterback. Ten targets, seven catches, 96 yards. He's not going to do that with Tyrod Taylor. No, Mike Williams would be the one to own there with Taylor. I mean, he was the favorite in week one. Fell off a little bit week two, but... All right. On to the, the entrees. We got those quarterback injuries out of the way. Let's talk about some running back injuries. Got to start with Saquon here. Torn ACL, season ender. Uh, Devonta oh. Freeman was scheduled to meet with the Giants today. He's rostered in less than 8% of leagues. Uh, there's also Deion Lewis, who was like the main backup or, and finished the game out. He's owned in less than 1% of leagues. And then Wayne Gallman, owned in less than one half of 1% of leagues. Um, they have Pro Football Focus's 20th ranked offensive line. I don't think I'm really excited about any of those three guys. Because I don't think it's an outright three down back replacing him. Um, we've seen Wayne, what Wayne Gallman can do in this offense as the starter for the last couple of years with Saquon going in and out. So even if they signed Devonta, who last went over a thousand yards in a like jumbled mess two years ago, I'm just not. I'm not rushing out to get any of these guys. I'm not spending really any fab. Yeah, so in our league, I happen to be lucky and have Devonta Freeman. Uh, I picked him up last week just on a whim, uh, assuming somebody was going to get hurt. And it turns out a lot happened. Uh, I would not be spending much fab on any of these guys because the Giants offensive line just blows. I mean, Five we, we to saw, 10% max on any of them is all I would spend. Uh, yeah, max. If you're going to put anything in, honestly, just put in a zero bid or put in a $1 bid. Um, just to get it over somebody that that does have the zero bid. 
18 carries, 75 yards um, this week. Last week, Saquon had, what, 15 carries for like eight yards or something like that? It was against Pittsburgh, but yeah. Yeah, I know, but they they gave up some some ground ground game against uh, the Broncos this week, and um, it, it's not like they looked in, impossible to beat this week um, against the Broncos. So I I don't like any of these guys. If they sign Freeman, he's probably the guy. Um, but yeah, I it's a very unremarkable looking group of players, and again, it's nothing that you should be. Um, you know, spending your sauce on. Our next major injury is CMC Christian McCaffrey with a high ankle sprain, expected to be out anywhere from four to six weeks. Mike Davis handled all of the time in his absence, who's rostered in less than 1% of leagues. It is worth stating that um, Curtis Samuel did get a rushing attempt afterwards. Maybe that would become more of a thing. Um, their head coach, Matt Rule, said that they will come up with a plan to use um, both Mike Davis and Reggie Bonifan to uh, make up for CMC's, uh, I don't know, time away from the team. I'm not. If I'm picking a guy, I think Mike Davis would probably have to be like. If he can get like if he is, if he can get that three down roll, the guy can catch passes. Yep. He might be one of the top guys for me at the running back position in terms of who I would actually try and spend money on. But I would only really spend money on him if I have CMC or if I have Saquon. I, I like Mike Davis more than Devonta Wayne Gallman or uh, Deion Lewis. I totally agree with you. Uh, me being a McCaffrey owner in one league, he basically seems like he's going to replace. I don't know, at least 60% of production you'd get just because of all the passes that he caught at the end there. Mm-hmm. I mean, if if you were a CMC owner and you saw him when he went out in the fourth quarter uh, after scoring that touchdown and all of a sudden uh, Mike Davis has eight catches for 74 yards, basically all in the fourth quarter, um, I th- that has to pique your interest at least moderately. Um, and it seems like Teddy Bridgewater was really airing it out at the end of that game. I, I know they were behind. Um, but he, I, 33 of 42. So if anything, it might perk his value up a little bit because they'll just go exclu- almost exclusively to the pass. Yeah. Um, cause they, it doesn't really seem like they have much of a running game going forward until CMC comes back. Uh, so I, I would expect them to continue to throw the ball more, um, increasing those wide receiver value, increasing, uh, Mike Davis value too. Um, I, from like a how much do you spend? It's tough because you don't want to blow it on somebody that's only going to be around for three, four weeks. You said four to six weeks on the high four to spring, six. Right? I mean, you're talking if it's six weeks, that's half your season just to get to the playoffs. You got to be yeah. blowing 40 percent, 50 percent fab. I think that's too much. If you're a CMC owner, if you're uh, the CMC I, owner, you yeah, get, the, Maybe maybe you could justify that. It depends on what your backup situation looks like um, or, you know, what the rest of your roster looks like. Again, I always prescribe to save it until week 11, 12, 13, um, but you got to get to the playoff first. So if you're 0-2 and you have CMC, uh, I think you're in a position where you have to spend more. If you're 2-0 and and you have CMC, I think you can hold back. If you're 1-1, and good luck. Um, I, I f- Spending 50% is... I think egregious. I, I think you'll get away with probably in the like 25 to 30 percent range just because people are thinking he's a rental too. So uh, he's more valuable to you as a CMC owner. So I guess to guarantee him, maybe you go 40 percent. Um, My question to you is um, what level running back is if you're trading one for one for CMC, what running back would you think is an acceptable trade? For CMC right now, knowing he's going to be out for the next yes. four weeks, month, month and a half. What do you think's fair? Um, I, I would be intrigued if somebody would do David Montgomery. I guess slightly after how he's looked the first two weeks. Uh, I don't, I don't think I would do that. But he would. He's if like you one owned, of the first. If you, if you rostered CMC, would you take that? No. Right. I don't think you could. Um. Man, I mean, 
You wouldn't take M- Mostert's hurt. <sighs> Josh Jacobs. I, he's playing right now as we're recording. He's not if doing I a was, whack of a if lot. If I was the CMC owner, if somebody wanted to give me Josh Jacobs, I would smash yes. Yeah. Okay. I mean, he's maybe one guy. I, you wouldn't do it for Joe Mixon, who's looked no. terrible. Um, It's hard because a lot of the RB2, like high-end RB2 guys sort of have had one good week, one bad week. Like Gurley's right. been kind of uninspiring. James Conner has been down, then up. Mostert was great, then got hurt. Monty's David the Johnson. only one that's been above and it has been a little bit more consistent. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I just thought that that was an interesting question. Um, yeah, I would. Do, do you have a barometer on that? I mean, you're saying yes to Josh, Josh Jacobs, but I don't know. I'd be looking for two guys. I'd be looking for a running back and a wide receiver just to try yeah. it because it's elite level production. Um, now, there's at least last I heard, there wasn't really a timetable for uh, Mostert's mild MCL sprain. And Tubbin Coleman is, is out multiple weeks with a knee issue. Um, paving the way for Jarek McKinnon, the Jet, owned in just over 19% of leagues. And uh, do you think he becomes a three down back? Because personally, no. I think it's the Jeff Wilson show. I don't think I don't yep. think McKinnon's role changes. He, I think he gets a few more carries. Don't get me. I guess I think he gets a few more carries, but I don't think he's touching a three down back role. No, and I mean McKinnon had three carries for seventy seven yards, which I mean obviously helps as long as fifty five uh, boosting that. But even on his other two carries, average eleven yards. Um, Jeff Wilson Jr. comes in two carries, three yards, so essentially the same amount of carries. I know production clearly wasn't there but uh they're trying they got to keep mckinnon healthy and keeping mckinnon healthy is not by running him up the middle and having a bunch of 300 yeah. pound guys hit him he's the the jet sweep he's the flare out he's the dink and dunk guy he's Slot not guy. the yeah yeah he's not the run up the middle guy so to your point jeff wilson last year um when he went in, he was, or, you know, when uh, Mostert or Tevin Coleman wasn't playing, it was the Jeff Wilson show. And theoretically, if you. I, it would be hard to start <laughs> any 49ers running back with any confidence in the first week. And so you can no. pick them up and you can pick them up, but it would be very, I wouldn't recommend starting any one of them. If I did, I would. It would be McKinnon, and I would just hope that he lucked into one of his outrageous long scores, like he's had each of the first two weeks. Well, not the first week; it was more of a, a swing pass at the goal line or inside the five. But I would be hoping for one of those, and just hoping for like five to ten points instead of counting on some fifteen, twenty carry madness. Um, yeah, I, I would just stay away from all the 49ers running backs. But the hard thing is, is like. You could pick up what amounts to like the the guy, the Jeff Wilson that could get 15 carries in the next game. And then the game after that, most are it's healthy enough to come back. So then you blow all this fab getting this guy and then you can't use yep. him. So. Right. And it's right. So you have to be looking at from a from a season long competitiveness standpoint and what. What is that fab going to get you? And if you if the answer is, I don't know, then you probably shouldn't be spending it. Yeah. Uh, so just stay, uh, stay away. But if you get it right, then you're doing great. So maybe it's a small play on Wilson. Um, maybe it's a small play on McKinnon. I'd probably prefer McKinnon. But once Debo comes back and once Kittle comes back, I think McKinnon's value yeah. evaporates. And so then you default back to Jeff Wilson and you don't know how long Mostert's going to be out. You don't know how long Tevin Coleman's going to be out. So. Good luck. Speaking of uh, spending fab and not knowing what you're getting in the long term, we move <laughs> on to the Cam Akers, Malcolm Brown injury situation. Akers had a rib injury. Uh, worth noting, he did get the first three rushing attempts in the football game sure and, then, and then got hurt. Uh, Malcolm Brown injured his finger during the game, which thrusted good old Daryl Henderson, all what, five feet, seven inches, 165 pounds, dripping wet into a significant role, who then turned it into 12 carries, 81 yards and a score. Uh, Outtouched uh, Malcolm Brown, 14 to 11, 
and outgained him 121 to 47 yards. Daryl Henderson currently rostered in less than 45% of leagues. Um, now, I don't know. <laughs> How bad is the rib injury? Is Akers going to play next week? If he is, I don't want to start any one of the three of them. Uh, I don't. What what do like every like Daryl Henderson is like I've looked everywhere for waiver advice and all of the pros are saying Daryl Henderson is like one of the top two guys to go and pick up right now. And they're suggesting spending obscene amounts of fab on somebody that's like five, seven, a buck sixty. And I'm like, what are we doing here? Last week, he was like non-existent. We he got opportunity because of injury. Like if that rib and finger injury aren't extremely serious, which Malcolm Brown played through, then like Daryl Henderson is going to be nothing in a three-headed attack. I Every know. time I listen to us back, I always like try to count the uh, yeah uh, ums likes you knows from me, and you're going to get a lot of them today. I have no idea what to do with this because. Just leave him alone. Let somebody else blow $30 in fab on him and move on with your day. For the record, Daryl Henderson is 5'8", 208, not 160. Oh, uh, really? I'm just, sorry. He just looks smaller. It's okay. Just wanted to clarify that. All five feet, eight inches of him. And I still think this is a pass first offense, or at least needs to be, because that that's where all the talent is. And from the get-go, I wanted nothing to do with this backfield because they said it was going to be the hot hand. And when Robert Woods is basically getting goal line carries because he's not getting targets. Yeah. Or what a bad look. That's rough. Right. But it's like, I don't want to deal with this. When people went out and blew all of their fab on, on Malcolm Brown last week, I was like, Good, good luck with that. And then Akers gets the first three carries and then it's Henderson that gets the follow, like the first two carries. And I'm like, Malcolm Brown isn't even seeing the field right now. Nope. I don't want anything to do with this backfield. If you want to, congratulations. For me, this is a complete stay away. Moving on to not knowing what you're getting in the long term. Well, actually, I think <laughs> we know what we're getting in the long term with this one. Lev Bell, hamstring injury. Uh, they're saying he'll be ready to come back in week five, which would be about a three-week injury timeline. Uh, you know what you're getting in Frank Gore, which is a whopping three yards per carry. He went 21 rushing attempts for 63 yards, no scores. Did have two targets in the passing game. Did not bring in either one of them because he is Frank Gore. Uh, Adam Gase would not let Sam Darnold audible out of a fourth and one and gave it to Gore, who got stuffed. Like, why? I just this should probably be like the shortest highlight of any player like don't pick up Frank Gore he's going to get 20 carries they're going to go oh, for that's 50 disrespectful. yards they're going to he's going to get 20 carries for 50 yards and unless he falls into the end zone on one of them you're going to get five points and I'm looking for more especially if I'm spending fab so yeah they're they're at the Colts next week which turns out is not a, a great stout matchup defense be- because they just completely shut down the Vikings uh, run game. Uh, Frank Gore's 5'9". He literally gets the ball and falls forward. And that's his uh, two and a half, three yards. And um, they turn around and give it to him again. And that's what he does again. They had no, they have no receivers on that team with, with no. Crowder out. And Load stay the box, away. make Darnold throw. And Adam Gase is still a terrible coach. Yeah. Oh, man. All right. Let's move on to some receivers that got hurt. First, Devontae Adams. Uh, he had his ankle rolled up on in the first half. And then later in the game, he tweaked his hammy. Uh, Lafleur said that Adams pushed to go back into the game. Uh, but because of the sizable lead, he lead that they had, he was held out for the remainder. And uh, I think that if he misses time this week, you have to add and start. Uh, MVS and 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 Alan Lazard MVS rostered in just over 17% of leagues Lazard rostered in about a third of leagues um, I don't really have a huge preference here between either one of them I'd say maybe Lazard just because I think if 
I think a lot of the reason why MVS is as open as he is is because people are paying attention to Devontae. So if he's mm-hmm. out, I think MVS maybe gets some more attention. I feel like Lazard can get some separation regardless. And I don't think he'll be doubled or anything. So you also have blind Lazard love from preseason and scant. Yeah. Valdez well. Scantling has also uh, out targeted him both weeks um, and has outproduced him from a fantasy standpoint both weeks. So theoretically, Valdez Scantling is the guy. But it's not like Lazard hasn't produced. No. But three for 45 stat line is not great. I'm not saying three for 64 is either, but. So they, they didn't have the to Packers, throw in the second half of that game, though. Like, I know the, <laughs> the Packers are still the a Aaron run, Jones show. They're still a run first team. I know that sounds weird, but that's LaFleur's style is to pound the rock and Aaron Jones look great. Man, the pack the Packers are dangerous. So that whole offense, yeah. which is having one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time. So yeah, if if Devonte is going to miss any time at all, then you have to try to go find Lazard or Valdez Scantling, and and they should be automatic plays. I guess what my advice would be though, because you know he's probably questionable all week, so you're going to yep. have to make your waiver claims with him being questionable and not really having clear direction. I guess my advice would be don't go out of your way to add either one of these guys, I'm not spending any more than 5% of fab max on either MVS or Lazard because I really truly feel like Devonte plays. I think he does too. I would also add that <laughs> I, I literally went through one team and just started purging people off my team that I didn't want to look at anymore. So Sony Michelle, I literally just dropped Gross. him today because I didn't want to look at his name anymore. Peyton Barber, I dropped him. I didn't want to look Woof. at his name anymore. I'm getting close to doing that with Jordan Howard, even though he has a touchdown in, in both games this, this year. But I think he has like 18 total rushing yards or something and, and two touchdowns. He's pretty close to being on the drop list, too. If if you have those guys, just go out and drop them be- tomorrow. And people get so confused as to why you're just randomly dropping players that it can almost like distract them a little bit Mm -hmm. and just go put in your waiver claims because you're going to drop them anyway. So just drop them, get them off your team. And at worst, you can, if you don't win your bids, you'll at least win somebody that you bid zero dollars on and you don't have to worry about dropping somebody and they'll just automatically get added to your roster. So that that's a, that's something you can do with Lazard or or Vela Scantling or any of the injured guys that are out for the rest of the season. Sure. And just bid zero dollars yeah, just bid zero dollars on someone, get them added to your team, and you, you can you can set up like a list of like fifteen people. You'll you'll get somebody that isn't bid on, um, and that way your team is better just by dropping some bums that you don't want to look at anymore. Oh man, on to our next uh, hurt receiver. Julio Jones had a hamstring injury that he uh, limited him during the week last week. He did play through it. Uh, however, that performance of two for twenty four. In week Yikes. two, he dropped what would have been a 42-yard score on a wildcat throw from Russell Gage. How about Russell Gage, by the way? Um, you got to think, if he actually ends up missing some time, Russell Gage had a 6 for 46 in one line in week one. I'm, excuse me, in week two, after catching nine for 190, nine catches for 109 yards in week one, he is only rostered in 20% of leagues. The targets, that offense, and the volume is there. I'm upset that Russell Gage is no longer available in our league and on somebody else's team. But uh, yeah, Russell Gage, I think, would make an excellent waiver wire pickup, especially if Julio misses time. I He's one of my favorite receivers that's available. I would spend between 5 and 10% fab on Russell Gage. That's reasonable. And Julio, man, what the hell? He's not he's not healthy. It's the soft tissue injuries because no preseason and no OTAs. I mean it just just Calvin Ridley. Air. I was way off on him. Uh yeah, Kelvin. Oh boy. You way off. <laughs> I would be like trading away Julio Jones if I was the Falcons. I would I would not be worried about paying that man. I would like Calvin no. Ridley is the future. But all right. Next injury, Cortland Sutton, torn ACL and MCL. Dunzo for the year. Um, really disappointing season. Started with the AC joint injury, comes back. 
and just absolutely gets destroyed right away. Um, Jerry Judy turned up in week one. He's uh, he's rostered, however, in almost 75% of leagues. So Jerry Judy is not out there as the replacement. Somebody I think that's a sneaky ad is KJ Hamler. The guy can run freaking routes and dress and excuse me, uh, Driscoll um, was actually very, it seemed like they might have had a smidge of a connection. KJ Hamler is only rostered in 1% of the leagues and he did tie the team for the lead in targets in week two. So everybody is looking at Jerry Judy. Why don't you get a little Hamler in your life? I think he uh, might be a, a nice little steal there and I think you could get him for really cheap because he's a rookie. Everybody loves ham, right? Mm. Yeah, it's very underrated meat. I, I love like ham. ham. A little, little salty. It has to be cooked right though. So KJ Hamler, seven targets. Uh, so did Jerry Judy. I, I guess. Uh, I don't know if I really want Driscoll. I mean, we talked about it briefly. I don't know if I really want Driscoll. Uh, he wasn't being any reliant on Driscoll to get KJ Hamler the ball. Like, dude, we're in week three. And we're starting and you're talk- these dudes. And you're talking about starting KJ Hamler? Speculative ad in a 12-team league. Don't spend any more than 2 to 5% of your fab. Spend I'm just zero. Saying. Spend Put, zero right, dollars. Fine. Do your $1 bid for Alex Krog. That's a 1% fab. Zero dollars. All right. Speaking of salty, something we're not salty about, <laughs> and we've predicted all season, Will Fuller, how them hammies doing, buddy? Oh, God. Not targeted. We need to reset the the uh, no injuries to Will Fuller hamstrings <laughs> countdown. He was not targeted Sunday, battling a hamstring issue, seen stretching on the sidelines, routinely taken in and out of the game. No injury wow. reported during, but then uh, spoken of after. Brandon Cooks, in his absence, went ni- five for 95. Uh... Randall Cobb, five for 59. Cobb rostered in less than 20% of leagues. He's going to be out there for you to bid on if you want to get yourself some corn on the Cobb. And I'm your upset. guy, right? I'm upset that I'm talking about your, your guy, the, the corpse of Randall Cobb being fantasy relevant. I said that it would only be relevant if Will Fuller got hurt. And then I said, I think I said immediately after that. So he'll be fantasy relevant in week three because by then Will Fuller will be hurt. And sure enough. <laughs> Whoa, Will Fuller. I, I'm i more encouraged by Brandon Cooks than anything because I thought he'd be a wide receiver too this year. Uh, five for 95, eight targets. Um, they had 36 attempts. So not fantastic it's somewhere in the 20 percent range of of a target share um i you can't trust will fuller people that that started him after week one and i don't blame you but he's just a guy that you just don't know if you can trust on a weekly basis so try to trade him yeah if you can get anything for him um yep our next TKO, Paris Campbell, left the injury, carted off. Evidently, he did avoid an ACL tear. He's going to be out several weeks. In his absence, wow. Michael Pittman went four for 37. He's rostered in about 14% of leagues. I'm not necessarily rushing out there to go get Michael Pittman. I feel like there's going to be some better waiver wire people. Um, but four for seven, four for 40 is a decently respectable line. And T.Y. Hilton has, has looked T.Y. Hilton's looked terrible. Yeah, yeah. He, he had a he, he looked he had a huge drop. Um I I screamed that once because he had a chance to catch a ball twice and he dropped it twice. I, they basically said, Hey, uh, we have this rookie. Uh, his name's Jonathan Taylor, and we're just gonna keep giving him the ball. At one point, he was on pace for like 40 carries um in yeah. that game. He ended up with 26. Um I I don't know if there's like you're not starting any wide receiver with Philip Rivers right now. He's a check down machine to a running back if he's going to throw the ball. And uh, that was the part that infuriated me because I and everybody thought Naheem Hines was a top one or two waiver ad last week. And what do I do? I spent all the fab in the world thinking I'm getting Austin Eckler 2.0. Instead, I get uh, Faustin Jekler and he is nothing like Austin Eckler and is just not used. 
at all. Zero carries, one target, one catch for four yards. First time in his career, he has a zero carry game. Uh, I'm going to hope and pray that this was a one-off shindig and that they get him the ball more because, man. Side note, uh, one other note just from that game. I know we're doing injuries, but I believe I saw a note that said Minnesota is the first team in like modern NFL history to run under 50 plays their first two weeks, both of their two first two weeks. That defense is bad. <laughs> and right, maybe the that's de- why, like maybe that's why, you know, the Colts are going to use Naheem Hines when they're behind and the Colts are not going to be behind to the Vikings because nobody's going to be behind to the Vikings. That's true. So, all right, moving on to our next injury. This is more of an injury update because he was already out for week two. That's AJ Brown had a bone bruise in his left knee out at least a few weeks. Corey Davis, 336 and a touch in week two on five targets, rostered in about a third of leagues at 35.5%. Are you interested in Corey Davis at all? Are you going to go put some dough on him? Uh, I already had him um, because I had AJ Brown and I had to go pick him up to start him because I screwed up AJ Green being in the wrong spot on Thursday night. But different different conversation. Uh, Ryan Tannehill. Take it like, from us, guys. We're professionals. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> really paying attention. Um, Ryan Tannehill. I mean, Ryan Tannehill is really good, but he doesn't <laughs> throw enough. Like, doesn't throw I don't even, enough. I, I understand he had four touchdowns, but he only had 24 attempts against Jacksonville. You don't need a bazillion attempts if you're throwing for four scores. Like, what? It's not repeatable. It's though. efficiency. If you. No, I. I understand You can make the same argument then for Gardner Minshew because he was 19 of 20 in the first game. Yeah, and he was 30 of 45 this week for 339 and three touchdowns. Okay, and in week one, Ryan Tannehill was 29 of 43 for 250 yards and two scores. I'm just saying, like, they're the same player. I don't understand why you hate Tannehill so much because they're the same player. They're going to get 20 points a week. I am convinced. That the both of them are extremely addable and will get you about 20 points a week. Do you just count it? Like they are this that's that's the same. Run heavy offense, sets up the pass, efficiency, hit open dudes. It's it's the same. And I can't believe how well that Jaguars offensive line has performed. Yeah, like, James Robinson looks legit, right? And against the Titans too, though. Like they had, cl- yeah. they have Clowney. They have a good defense, and they James Robinson is legit, man. Yep, I agree. I, I was. Do you want to go into Keelan Cole real quick and just how he has been? Yeah, Keelan some, Cole, some roster number one wide receiver, which is crazy. Rostered in two percent of leagues, uh, seven targets turned it into six fifty eight and one against the Titans. Led the team in targets in week one. He leads them now through two weeks. Are you running out for Keelan Cole as a DJ Chark manager? I'm nervous if I'm a DJ because I, I thought DJ Chark was going to be like all they had. I actually did draft Keelan Cole last year and started him a couple weeks and then he literally just disappeared. I don't know where he went for the second half of last year. He was on their team. He didn't do jack. And now all of a sudden Keelan He's back. Ha- Different yeah, offense, looks, offensive coordinators matter. That's all I have to say. I think it's, it's true, Keelan it's, Cole. Yeah, but you don't think DJ Chark is bad. I don't think he's bad. I just don't think that necessarily the same reads and progressions on the plays are the same as they were last year. You know, yeah. I I think for whatever reason, they're going, it, the offense doesn't go to the perimeter as much. Maybe it goes I, to the, the Keelan Cole. Yeah, I'm I'm giving Chark one more week, and if he's if he doesn't see at least like eight nine targets not like this upcoming week, uh, I believe they're on Thursday night football against the the Titans. Does that sound right? I um, think so. Yeah, if he if he does not show up in that game, then I have some serious concerns about being a DJ Chark guy and him kind of. I'm relying on him in several leagues. Um, so yeah, it's, it's probably, especially if you have Chark, 
It's probably um, worth going out and trying Jags, to just get Keelan uh, this Cole is a just real on the barn burner. That it, it's Dolphins at the Jags on Thursday. Oh, God. Yeah, what a real barn burner. Fire up Miles Gaskin. <laughs> is, was, that a, was that a Tiger King reference? I don't even know. I don't think so. Oh, Carol okay. Baskin, Miles Gaskin. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> All right. Um, yeah, Keelan Cole, man. If we're while, while we're talking waivers, James Robinson is not owned in enough leagues. He is owned in more than 50%, so he's not really making our waiver show. But literally, if he's out there, he needs to be on your roster because he's still yep. free in a, like a third of leagues. Um, yep. Back to injuries. Sammy Watkins had a concussion. Watkins. He should be out probably, you'd think, maybe a week, maybe two. But Cole Hardman uh, is rostered in 43% of leagues because he was overdrafted. Um, <laughs> he had two catches on three targets for 20 yards. The Chiefs do play Monday night next week, so maybe Watkins is able to get in, get healthy in time. Um, I guess I are you making a, a, a mad rush to go out and get McColl with Watkins being injured? No, because that, that whole offense runs through Kelsey and Tyree Kill. And I mean, Kelsey had 14 targets, Hill had 11. I I was watching Robinson that game. is still going to get the straight touchdown too, and Clyde edwards yeah, I, also had increased targets. I was watching that game, and I didn't even see Sammy Watkins until he caught that ball in the middle of the field, ran upfield, and then just got obliterated by yeah. by a defender. <laughs> so, I mean, Watkins is borderline droppable. I know a lot of people picked him up after week one. Um, you, you can't can't trust him. He'll have his weeks where he'll be a wide receiver too. Um, he might have a stray wide receiver one week, but just not reliable. And then our last injury, Sterling Shepard had a toe injury with an MRI today. Uh, Jeez. looks like he's going to miss multiple games. We talked about how great he was going to be if he could stay healthy. Obviously this guy just can't, um, golden Tate dropped five for 50 against the bears, um, aided by Sterling Shepard missing time. I'm okay. Adding golden Tate, uh, if you're really desperate for some, some, I don't know, bench depth that receiver, I think it really is going to solidify Darius Slayton as probably a low end wide receiver to high end flex. Um, just cause it takes another target away at, at the receiver position from him. Um, what do you think? D- Darius Slayton looked not great. Uh, he had a big, big drop. Yeah. Uh, drops happened. Took- no, I know, but I mean, Golden Tate caught everything that was thrown his way. Uh, He wasn't there week one. I think he makes a difference when he's on the field and and is somebody that, uh, you know, Slayton is the big, bigger play guy. I know we saw that at the end of last year, Um, but Golden Tate's, I think, going to give you... And in week one. Yeah, no, I know. I I think Tate's probably going to be more consistent um, from a, hey, he has a higher floor. He's probably going to get you, you know, seven, seven points every week. 7 to 12, um, somewhere in there. But yeah, Slayton's going to be the bigger play guy and definitely I would prefer him over Tate if given the option at this point. All right. And these are other guys that are not injury related. They are just available in more than 50% of leagues. Um, we have not really talked about tight ends and, you know, tight ends aren't <laughs> aren't uh, immune <laughs> to injury. Uh, George Kittle missing this week. Hopefully he comes back next week um but i myself am a kittle manager and am stuck trying to find an answer at tight end with him being out uh one of those guys mike gesicki currently rostered in less than or excuse me available in more than 50 percent of espn leagues at 11 targets eight catches 130 yards and a score against the bills which is a great defense uh commanded 21 percent of miami's targets through two games that is pretty good Crazy target share for a tight end. I was between him and Logan Thomas uh, picked up with Thomas and obviously regret that decision this week uh, with Gasicki going off. If you're struggling at tight end, is he your priority pickup? Uh, I mean, if jo- if Janu Smith is available, I think I think you try to get him instead. Um, he's currently w- tight end number one, um, even ahead of Travis Kelsey. Um, and he's only rostered in less than 40% of leagues. At yeah, currently. Yeah, 40.3 for two scores. Yeah, he had, yeah, he just getting the uptick. I mean, the, the top tight ends right now, 
Johnu Smith, Travis Kelsey, Noah Fant, Tyler Higby, Gasicki is currently the fifth tight end. Um, so yeah, why not? Especially with with him getting all those targets, and you know, two is coming at some point. Um, and you got to assume he's going to be checking down to his tight end. And then our last tight end, Logan Thomas, avail or rostered in only eleven percent of leagues, had nine targets last week, uh, four for twenty six against the Cardinals. These three guys, Gasicki, Thomas, and Johnny Smith, if you're a Kittle owner or if you are somebody that's dealing with, I don't know, say like the Rob Gronkowski drafter and you're struggling at tight end, how much fab would you spend on either of these three guys? Any of them? Johnny Um, Smith, I'd go like 20 or 30 percent. I think he's for real. I think you can actually go a little cheaper and go the Dalton Schultz route. Um, Okay. Okay. So, yeah, so I, Dalton Schultz filled in for yeah. Blake Jarwin, had nine for 88 and a score against the Falcons. Roger in 1% of leagues. Um, maybe ten, they ten were behind, targets. though, and had to throw it a million times. I'm not no, sure. I'm, I know. I, but I'm just like, if they're going to keep chucking down like that, that, that'd be great. I, they've got three other burners. Gallup disappeared. I have no idea what's going on with him. CD um, Lamb is good. CD Lamb is good. I mean, I'm probably if you're in a tough tight end spot, you have to remember that not that many people are looking at four tight ends to pick up because they probably like that. You're not going to carry an extra tight end on your roster. You shouldn't. By week, I guess you shouldn't. Week, if you're well, watching this, please don't carry more than one tight end. Yeah, you shouldn't. <sighs> So if just look around, if you see that everybody else has a tight end and you can see Johnny Smith or Gesicki or even Dalton Schultz, then you should be able to go out and get. Yeah. Logan Thomas. I don't trust that that whole offense, though. The nine targets are what I trust. Yeah. But you wish you didn't start him last week. I just wish I would have picked up Gesicki instead. But Gesicki had a more underwhelming week one. Um I think Gasicki's probably the guy. I guess my concern there is if Tua starts eventually, does Tua keep up the Gasicki production? Um, as far as a season long thing, that was with the appeal of Logan Thomas to me and obviously of Johnny Smith. But I'm probably yeah. spending if it's Johnny, I'm gonna go out and spend twenty percent of fab if I'm desperate, or thirty percent of fab. Logan Thomas yeah, Gasicki. Gesicki, probably 15, Logan Thomas, 5 to 10, Dalton Schultz. I think you can get him for like two bucks. Yep. And and don't go out and get Mo Ali Cox either. No. Um, I, I know he had five for 111, uh, six targets, but that it's just not a passing offense. So don't don't waste your time on on him. And those targets are going to rework themselves. They're not going to be up in every game. I mean, they're going to be playing from behind a lot. I don't know. I just... Kind of a weird game there. Um, yep. My probably one of my top ads of the week is Joshua Kelly, still available in too many leagues. He's only rostered in 28% of leagues. He had 23 carries for 64 yards, another two catches, and 49 yards against Kansas City. He's basically getting equal touches um, as Austin Eckler. He's really the 1A and 1B situation right now. Mm-hmm. And he's getting goal line carries too. So I think Joshua Kelly, man, he could be a league winner, especially if uh, I think if Herbert stays as the quarterback or enters at some point of the league during the league year. Yeah, I, I'm a little bummed because I thought that was going to be Justin Jackson. And it turns out it it's not. I was close. You're uh, right on, that there was going to be a lot sleepers. of value there. You just picked the wrong guy. But hey, what picked can you the wrong do? guy? Yeah, well, we mentioned him once. Didn't think it was going to be him as a rookie coming in. Yeah, I, he you were over the moon about him last week. Uh, I went and picked him up for zero dollars in a league last week, and wow. I was ecstatic. Uh, and I just have him sitting on the bench, especially if Eckler goes down, who's a smaller guy. Um, you you got to love the value there. I don't understand how he has, you know, after that first week, I figured he'd probably be in the like, 60 to 65 percent range as far as being owned the fact that it's only 28 percent uh is just ridiculous yep and then miles gaskin uh <laughs> that miami workhorse that we all pegged all in the offseason 
Uh, he had seven joke. for 36 on the ground, plus another six receive receptions for another 36 in the air. Uh, rostered in 13% of leagues, 13 touches to Brita's eight and Howard's five. <laughs> I think the yards are going to be there. I don't think the touchdowns will be because that's Jordan Howard's role. So I think you're looking at seven to 10 points a week, unless he busts a long one, which I don't know if he has the ability to do. Um, I just don't think he's going to get the red zone opportunity. I think that's where Jordan Howard shines. I can't trust a running back in a potential ba- of a potential bad team that doesn't have quantity or quality of carries. I think you get him for 5% of fab. And if you just lost Saquon Barkley or CMC, or you lost like, I don't know, CMC and Raheem Mostert and you need a guy, Miles Gaskin is a fine plug and you could probably get him for five bucks. So true. I guess if you're really desperate, I would say go get Miles Gaskin. Um, Should, Should I be dropping Jordan Howard in leagues? Yes, I would have dropped him last week. Hmm. He, he, he's only value is if they're up and they're trying to run out the clock. And, you don't, and, you don't trust his current uh, stat line this year. No, Thir- thirteen carries, eleven yards, two touchdowns. Yeah, it's a glorious stat line. Man. He's on pace for he's on pace for sixteen touchdowns. How the mighty have fallen. That would have been the second most running back touchdowns last year, I think. 16 rushing touchdowns he's on pace for, and you would drop him. Unbelievable. That would have been tied for first overall as far as rushing scores with Derrick Henry and Aaron Jones last year. And Derrick Henry had to run for 1,400 yards to get 16 scores, (laughs) which means he would have ran for like 175 yards and gotten 16 touchdowns. How What a crazy stat line that would have been. It would have been like 10 yards a score. Yeah, can you imagine if he he's currently on pace for 80 rushing yards and 16 touchdowns? Oh my, no, 80 rushing yards and six. That's what, five yards a score or two, two yeah. yards a score? Yeah, that's glorious. All right, and then we've already talked about these guys, but these are our waiver wire QB ads of the week. We've been talking about them. One's Alex's guy, the other one's mine. That is Gardner Minshew for Alex and Ryan Tannehill for mine. Minshew, back-to-back games with three touchdown passes to start the year, faces the Dolphins in week three, who just gave up over 400 passing yards to Josh Allen. Uh, He's only rostered in less than 20% of leagues. Minshew's going to be great. That offensive line has pulled it out. The offense looks great under Jay Gruden with a capable quarterback. Like, you know, we saw what it was supposed to be in Washington for a couple of years, but he just didn't have the guys there to really execute the Jay Gruden offense. Um, I like what Minshew's doing, man. I like what that offense looks like. I'm glad that I have James Robinson in a lot of leagues, and I'm really starting to think about pulling the trigger on Minshew and Keelan Cole here. Yeah, I you you know I'm high on Minshew. By the way, we we do have a board bet, and I don't know if you remember that you have you have Tannehill and I have Minshew. Yeah, for for, for the year, it's got to be close. Tannehill. Tannehill currently has uh, less than two points more than Gardner Minshew. Less than two points total? Yeah. Wow. Just just thought I'd throw that out there. I, I love Gardner Minshew. I think they're going to be down in every game. That's why I was high on DJ Chark, too. I, I'm just waiting for that to, to happen because I thought their defense would stink. Um, and I especially once they got rid of Fournette, I didn't think they were going to have a running back. Turns out they do. So it does change the calculus a little bit. Um, so yeah, I, if, if you are in quarterback hell, like I am in a couple leagues, which, um, I'm relying on Teddy Bridgewater in one league in another league, I have, uh, Carson Wentz and Daniel Jones, which has just been awful through two weeks. Um, I I'm looking at, you know, it's hard to drop either one. I guess I would drop Daniel Jones now that Barkley's gone. Um, and not give up on Wentz quite yet. Um, but yeah, I, I'm looking at, at Gardner Minshew. Um, Jared Goff is available in leagues. Joe Burrow is is available in a lot of leagues too. Um, they're just guys that um, I'd much rather have than um, some people that were drafting quarterbacks. So, like Cam Newton has been unbelievable. And if you got him late, you're sitting in great shape who's basically a top five quarterback the rest of the way. But if you had 
like as a football fan, if your f- team had quarterback signings or issues or whatever over the summer and they didn't sign Cam Newton, you have to be upset with your team. And that includes the Carolina Panthers, by the way. Like, why did they ever let Cam leave? Like, no, that's a good, good question. That is terrible. Um, all right. Well, that does it for us. If you found any of our waiver wire advice helpful, please like subscribe, hit the bell. If you're watching on YouTube, uh, we're going to transfer to our social media page. Please follow us. We are at the FF Sackos on all of our social medias. Our weekly rankings can be found on our website, the fantasy football Sackos.com. Thank you guys for listening. Have a good night. Let's never do week two ever again. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Football Sackos podcast. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter at the FF Sackos.